Oh, welcome to, I guess I'm going to say special episode because I feel like I connect to you on so many levels, which it's not trying to sound like I love you, but I do love you. <laughs> and it, it, I respect that. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, like I said, we're having a conversation all day yesterday and today. And it's just like, God damn, man. You know, especially for being as young as you are, it's like you really understand, you know? I think it's like because I it's you get a lot from just understanding people's perspectives and talking to so many people. You can kind of soak it all in. But like there's so much to talk about with you. And I don't know whether to go down the weightlifting route of things. I don't know what. First of all, I want to say thank you to Brad because Brad from the Coffee Buzz podcast kind of connected us together in a way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big time. What, you know, what I'm saying? it's funny because like uh, I was just, um, you know, I, I've been on Brad's show. He's been on my show and. You know, and um, just the way his motivational talking is, it's like so like I want to say subliminal, but it's not subliminal because it's right in your face. But just the way he does it, it's so fluid. It's just like it feels good. You know what I'm saying? It just gets a little motivation. And, um, you know, uh, yesterday I was like I was cleaning out the yard, throwing out some trash. And then I was like, let me put on the podcast because I didn't get a chance to listen to it when he posted it. And then I was like, man, who the fuck is this kid he's talking to? Because it's fucking great. I appreciate that. When you sent me a message out, literally in my head, I went, what did I say in the episode <laughs> that what, cause I was going off like two days, no sleep, man. So I was like, let's yeah. just, I think he was expecting like a 45 minute conversation or something. I'm like, now nah, we're going straight two hours. And he's like, <laughs> ah, man, like, but it's, it's crazy. Cause I, I, so here's my interpretation of you, for instance, when yeah. I saw your message, I thought you were some dude named Ryback Reeves, because I guess I get <laughs> you and him mixed up because your profile yeah. pictures are kind of the same, like just oh, yeah. jack bodybuild style thing. So I'm like, yeah. is this the same dude? And then I was like, oh, wait, no, this is a completely different person. So I basically just mind screwed myself. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'll take that compliment because you know I'm saying if, if I can say I look like Ryback, I, I take that. <laughs> Now, like, for instance, uh, you do the Angry Dad podcast. Well, yes. And do you know where people can find that at? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Angry Dad podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spreaker, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, you know, iTunes. It, it, it's everywhere. There is like no podcast platform that I'm on. I'm very diligent about making sure that I'm on every platform. So whatever you look at, um, I've just been promoting Spotify a little bit more. The only reason I'm promoting Spotify a little bit more is because... Um, I'm trying to switch over to using Spotify more. So if I, I'm trying to like use the aspect of if I promote this more, I'm going to use it more. And the only reason I'm saying using it more is because that's where Joe Rogan's at. And um, I hate fumbling through apps because usually I just use Apple podcast and, uh, you know, and I'm, and I'll get it all. And I had a separate, um, um, I use Napster since the day it was put out as an app you can use for music. What's Napster? And it, Naps, Napster is the original file sharing site that you could use for music. Back in the day, it was like a whole music thing where like um, all the artists started suing them because, um, you know, they were just giving away everyone's music for free. You could literally upload a song, upload an album, and you could just download it for free. And that's just how it was for the longest time. Like music was the Wild West the back in the day. And I used that first and then it turned into a subscription fee and it changed its names to Rhapsody. And um, like I said, I had it since the day it was, you know, used and I had all my music, every, like I, thousands, thousands, like the major, um, I have a 250 gig phone and 200 gigs is all music. You know what I'm saying? Because I, that's, I just love, you know, heavy metal to rock to old school to, you know, 90s rap and um just think, let and that sink using, in, let that sink in that not even like what, 10 years ago, maybe that we had yeah. to download actual songs to the phone where you had to get like, yeah. a, I had to get an extended memory card to put into my phone where it was just nothing but albums of Eminem and like, old Ex school. exactly. And then like now they just, you just have an app for it all. You, like you just stream it. Yeah. You just stream it. It's it's so fucking crazy. And, um, and the thing is too, is like, uh, I've used this app for so freaking long the only thing is it it's it never crossed over to podcasting like every other app and because it didn't cross over to podcasting I'm like fuck I'm hate I'm I really hate having like six or seven apps to listen to things when I could just have one app and have it all and so now I'm kind of like all right I, you know I have I have a family so we have a family Spotify account because that's what all my kids use so <clears throat> let me start using that so I start using that and I have it on my phone but I'm never using it because I'm so used to using my other apps. So I'm like, all right, let me just kind of start using Spotify more often. 
I only have two major apps on my phone that mean the most to me. I think it would have to be Dragon City's number one. I played that game yeah. for I played that game before it was cool. Like all these people, <laughs> like you see all these YouTubers posting advertisements for Dragon City and all this stuff. I've been playing yeah. that game six years straight. I've spent more <laughs> money in that game than I've spent on car payments, groceries, everything. <laughs> but then there's that like you, you end up like at least you're not the person that invested in an app like SoundCloud, where I remember when SoundCloud came out and there was this whole big boom of like, it's going to be the next top music app. It's the best place for recording artists to get their music out there. And then it just stayed at the same level where it has not gone up and it hasn't gone down. It's like the toilet no. paper stock before coronavirus. Exactly. Yeah. Because uh, I, you know, my podcast is on SoundCloud too. And, you know, like I said, and it's funny too, because like um, SoundCloud, I get so much traffic. And it blows my mind because I'm like, man, who the fuck is really using fucking SoundCloud to listen to podcasts? But I ain't hating it. You know what I'm saying? I get plenty of messages. I get plenty of interaction with people. And I'm like, all right, cool. But at the same time, I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some dude sitting in his basement just playing World of Warcraft and listening to SoundCloud doesn't understand that there's a whole other world. It's like MySpace. Like, how many people still stuck on MySpace? Like, there was a yeah. big, big flash of that coming back. But nobody ever remembers when you used to have yeah. a certain site online that was like playlist.com. And you get to create yep. a profile and you get to download all your songs. I remember so many times sitting in the middle of my house when we had the family computer, you had this one giant old ass computer one giant in computer in the middle of your house. And all you hear is my doorbell by the white stripes. I'm thinking about my doorbell. <laughs> and like people would just come home and be like, what the fuck? Like, what is he playing on? That? I mean, I come from a family of DJs and producers and yeah. stuff. So everything we're getting new CDs, black eyed peas was my jam back in the day, you know, all this stuff. And then my dad's like, dude, you got to like, expand your horizons out like you're listening to the same fucking song on the same cd not the other 14 songs that are on there like they created more yeah. music than pump it yeah you know exactly that, right? and i'm like yeah but that's the only one i really want to listen to like i mean come on like i don't want to now everybody's got spotify in their pockets where they can just skip skip until they get that ad and then that exactly ad screws you over well seeing that, that that's we have um you know the kids complained enough to where we got the family plan where we don't get ads you know what i'm saying it's just you know, of course, there's going to be like, uh, you know, people who produce their ads because like when you have a premium account, you know, we, we you don't get that shit. And so, you know, what I'm saying like uh, with Pandora and, you know, Spotify, you know, you get those ads or like go listen to these three ads and you'll get, you know, an hour, two hours free of ads, you know, and then the kids complained enough to where like, all right, let's just get get a premium account so you guys don't get ads. You know what I'm saying? It's like Hulu. You know, I have a Hulu and I get ads on Hulu and they're like, why can't we get the premium one? I was like, because Disney doesn't offer it. All right. You get what they give us. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? You can, Look, I've talked for so long about how I think that the fact that you have to have ads and then if you have to pay more money to skip them, I think you should have to get ads because we're way too immediate as people. We can't yeah. wait. We can't. And I understand. Look, I'm a weightlifter, much like yourself. So the thing is. When I'm working out, I don't want to hear an ad in the middle of my workout. It yep, just completely throws exactly. me off. But I like having that there because I think it tells you, hey. You, there are some things in life you don't it's like mcdonald's serving breakfast every single day no matter what time yeah. that's too much freedom for anybody you can't have those options no no you got you got to have a break you know what i'm saying that break gives you an opportunity to either break your concentration to figure out what you need to do or reset yourself to all right let, let, just like in bodybuilding or in weightlifting let me okay i got an ad give me a second get a breather oh you know i'm more concentrated i'm more focused i'm not just in the zone but i'm putting myself in a position to be better placed in the zone yeah. you know I just feel like there's so much that's instant, so much that's now. And I think that's part of the problem with how the world works is that when someone expects it to be now, it's like, no, the reason why Domino's, Pizza Hut, whatever they say, 30 minutes or less is that yeah. they're giving you a time frame window that it's probably going to be 30 minutes. It's probably exactly. not going to be five unless you live right across the street. And you know what I'm saying? It's got to be a realistic fucking time. You know what I'm saying? Do you and want a five dollar pizza? Do you want a five dollar <laughs> pizza? That sounds like they just pulled it out of like the freezer popped it in the microwave and gave it to you i'm like i want that pizza to take 30 minutes even if i'm starving because i know they're cooking it fresh exactly and everybody knows you got to give pizza time to rest so it's not because like I'm, I'm a man of burning my mouth you know what i'm saying i'm i'm like if it, it, I, I could see it steaming i could see it hot i can see it like give it a second no no and it fucking goes straight into my mouth and then my wife looks at me like why I'm like, I don't know. I can't help it. It looked great right there. <laughs> That's you know? literally me, except my brain's not going, no, no. It's going, <laughs> ow, ow, because I'm just doing it. I mean, the whole concept yeah. of 
you know time and you know the world is going to be over with when they make a pizza that comes right out of the oven, but then there's a device that sucks out the heat real fast. So it's nice and just even temperature for your mouth. Yeah. I'm like, where's the burning sensation? It's not exactly. like when you pee, you got to have that because that's a leveler to life. You know, <laughs> you got to, you know, it's got to be a reminder of how stupid I really am because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what, like for bodybuilding, for instance, like what fascinates you more about it? Cause like I, I mean, I've worked out every single day for the past eight years. I'm not a, like a giant, like big bulky guy or anything. I just do it for yeah. like aesthetic look, but what I work at a gym too. And I started to notice like the eating habits, all these types of things. And you start really researching down into the mental health that really goes into bodybuilding. A lot of these people oh, yeah. suffer from an eating disorder, same thing with UFC fighters. And it's just, that's a fascinating route for me is like, you start to see why people get into these rituals and these, you know, anabolic window times and all these types of yeah. things, even though it might not, it might be true fake. I don't know, but you end up training your body. Like I get hungry exactly at 11 every single day. And every time my meal times are, I get hungry at those times. But if I'm talking to a random stranger about that, they're like, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, yeah, I just, how I've been doing it. <clears throat> well, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now, the, like um, what fascinates me the most is the 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 cult like intuition that you get from it because what it is is you're not in a cult you're not following cult you're following your own path and the thing is is once you get to a certain point you you start accepting things you need to do to achieve your goals like for me I wanted to be 300 pounds fucking peeled jacked and shred I wanted to be a mass monster I'm naturally gifted I am <clears throat> six five uh, I've been I was five nine or five eleven in the fourth grade. I've been a huge person. I got farmer strength, ridiculously thick, ridiculously big. And I never really did anything with it. But the thing is, is I would like watch Conan. I would watch, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I'm like, that's what I want to be. That's what I want. And then, you know, I got a moment in time in my life where it was a down point, you know, divorce. And it always takes a dramatic event to really change yourself to have that kind of perspective. And so what ended up happening is, I started going to the gym and I started training, but I wasn't really taking it serious. I was just like, yeah, I'm a fucking beast. I'm a fucking monster. I'm training hard. And then um, I started kicking around. Yeah, I should compete. I should do this. And then I had a couple of buddies that do bodybuilding professionally. What they ended up telling me is they're like, look, if you really want to do this, and you're really going to take this serious. Guess the fuck what? Come train with us. So these guys beat me to shit, bro. I'm talking about like, they like, um, and I'll give you an example of what I mean, beat the shit. Like um, we're squatting and they're like, look, you finish each set and I'm going to spot you. And if you don't finish your set, you better keep pushing. And so I'm like, what the fuck? And so I start squatting and we're getting up to that 315. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm getting ready. Like I, can, I can't do no more. He grabs me by my chest from behind. You keep pushing. And so he was literally squatting me, squatting the weight. And we finished the set. I fucking stumble over and I just puke my fucking guts out puke my fucking guts out and he's like that's bodybuilding that's training and it took me to a level to where I love this I love this pain I love this focus I love the euphoria that it gave me to the point where I was like I need this 24 7 and so once that happened to me I literally just like you said you research you train you fucking read articles you read documents you fucking it would magazines and I just start like man, I got to, I quit smoking. I quit drinking. I quit doing all these things because these impurities stop me from growing. All right. They stopped me from achieving what I wanted. And they got to the point where I was like, all right, now how much calories do I need to eat to be exactly this big, this size? What are my macros? And I figured them out after I figured them out through calculations, I was literally eating five pounds of meat a day. I was, it was like close to 10,000 calories a day. I would wake up every two hours and eat from basically midnight to midnight. I, I was eating a meal. There was no point in time where I wasn't eating a meal. I'd make these thousand calorie shakes just because I didn't need the protein. I needed the calories to fuel my muscles. And if I didn't have that, I would fucking just start vomiting. I would feel nauseous. I'd feel sick. But the thing is, is I was achieving it. I was growing exponentially. I was fucking like this is the peak of what my want my fitness to be. So I was eating and eating. People were like, what the fuck? Like I would take a flat of a one pound turkey, comes in a, in, a, in, a, in a square, throw it in the oven, cook it for 20 minutes, pull it out and eat it like that. No salt, no pepper, no nothing. Just like, like if it was a fucking brownie. 
You yeah, know what I'm saying? People don't understand. They look at that and they go, that seems so awful to eat. Like, don't you want to taste your food? I'm like, once you've eaten that for so long, you really enjoy that food. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. every day I've eaten a can of tuna. I mean, see, I think our shift here is you go for the calories you want the calories and calories i yeah. don't want the calories so if yeah. i eat, if i eat a french fry i would be on the treadmill doing 1600 calories on the treadmill then working oh, yeah. out i mean at one point during winter i think like four or five years ago i w didn't have a job so what's the best thing to do if you got a gym membership and you got no yep. nothing to do i live in a beach town so during winter there's nothing to do so I'm just like, I'm oh, going to yeah. work out twice a day. So I was literally eating, sleeping, working out, eating, sleeping, working out. And I got down to 3% body fat where I wanted to do competitions. But the whole reason I started working out was because I was an overweight kid. So that yeah. bullying stuff kind of pushed me to a point where I was like, yeah, I, get, I was checking calories. I still check calories, but I can yeah. never consume. I mean, I think the most I consume on a daily basis is probably like 500 at the most. Yeah. Like, and that's it's a lot for me. Oh, yeah. No, hey, that's a lot for anybody because we – I've been blessed with basically a bottomless stomach. I've like, ever since I was a kid, I just eat and eat and eat. Like, um, you know, there's always good examples. Like I drink a gallon of milk every day when I was a kid. Didn't matter. My mom would buy four or five gallons of milk every week. And I drink every single one of them. You know, she would never get mad, never get upset. She was just like, all right, I'll just get some more milk. Or I would, and I would just eat all this food. And so when I made the transition into bodybuilding, it just was like the fucking, best thing in the world because like I'd love to eat I love to just just consume food and it clicks so fucking hard because like people were like how are you eating this much food or how are you consuming like this and I was like and, and it got to a point where like I wouldn't even care what it tastes like I just would eat it because I knew what it was going to do to my body and you know how you're talking about training um I used to work 12 hours a day I would do cardio one hour before I worked out and then I do cardio after so I'd, I'd be on the bike or the treadmill before I work out train for about three hours and then I would do another hour on the Stairmaster before I went home I did that religiously for fucking like six or seven years you know what I'm saying and just the, the amount of people are like what the hell I'm like yeah but when I would peel off my shirt or I would fucking walk around people like you're like are you a UFC fighter or you, you play football I'm like no 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 I just this is what I do for fun. You know what I'm saying? When did that, when did it finally hit you? Cause like, I mean, like I said, I've been doing it every day, eight years, but then slowly this past year, I think with coronavirus, when it first started happening, I mean, I had one place, my gym, which was 24 hours, I'd be 2 AM working out. So I'd get everything done. Yeah. And then I, cause I need that to talk to people. I can't have a conversation yeah. with you if I haven't worked out, I'll still work out the same period of time, but I don't go as hard as I did before because like, I don't know. I looked at it like it hit me at one point. Like it's all you're seeing is the confines of a gym. Eventually you want to go out and live your life and put some pursuits somewhere else. So, you know, doing podcasting and stuff, I've, I'll cut my workout a little bit short to do a recording or something. And it's like, yeah. you start to notice that shift in it a little bit where it's like, you don't need to be there and spend all day in there. And I see kids doing it now. And I'm like, I remember when I was doing that not so long ago, but it was like this shift of like trying to find myself too. Like I really, that's a big goal I'm heading towards. I'm like, I think, you end up finding something in the horizon that you really want to go for. It's either because you can't just do bodybuilding and you can't just be like, I'm going to half ass it. I'm going to put half my time into yeah. it. You need to be a hundred percent. That's all you got. When you get off work, that's all you're thinking about. That's you're going to spend four or five hours in there and you're going to get to that peak. Oh yeah. No, no, that that's exactly it is um, like with bodybuilding. It, it's a very, very fine line. Like, um, you know, I'm married now, but before I was married and uh, with anything, I'd be like, I'd have to explain to people like, hey, check this out. This is important in my life. I'm not saying you're not important, but this is important to me. And so I would always clearly define the line of I go to the gym, I train. You want to come with me, you can come with me. I don't mind. But at the same time, understand that at this point in time, when I say I'm going, it's in the conversation. I'll see you when I'm done. I'll text you when I can text you during my workout. But if not, understand that this is what I do. And then when I would do that, people are like, wait, what? I'm like, look, you're talking to me and speaking to me because of how I look. I didn't achieve this by slacking. So, you know, a lot of times people would understand it. Sometimes people didn't understand it. And the thing is, is like, I would, it would be one of those definition marks where I'd be like, check it the fuck out. And then I would be like, all right, now I have kids. I, it's my, it's my kids, the gym, and then I take care of everything else. And then I would always mediate that time specifically you know what I'm saying? And I also trained at funky hours because I worked at night. I would get off, 
literally sleep a half hour before I might take my kids to school. After I take them to school, I go straight to the gym. I train from, you know, like 10 o'clock, eight o'clock, you know, or because the kids started at eight. So I'd be at the gym about nine, get out of the gym at 12, one o'clock, just depending on what I was doing. And then go home, shower, eat, take a nap, pick the kids up, bring them home, feed them homework, take another nap, and then go straight to work. You know what I'm saying? And so like in between there, I have moments and times where I can, look, I can text you between this time. I can do this between this time. But and it during. just was what it was. Exactly. Not, and that, and that so, was the, you that's know, the biggest thing that grinds my gears is when I'm in the middle of a workout, I get a text on my phone. I get someone that wants to keep sending paragraphs and go into an argument. Dude, this is the whole reason where I had to literally balance social media with the podcast. And then I had to balance my workouts. The hardest thing yeah. was I'm talking to people from all over. So I'll get people that's nighttime in Australia. It's all these times when I'm training. So they're messaging me. And then I'm like raised up to be this kid to answer the phone, make sure you respond yeah. back, be polite. So I'm like, Oh, it's, it's that nagging, but nothing gets me more pissed. I'm like, we can't talk when I'm working out. It's just, this yeah. has to happen. Cause it levels me throughout the rest of the day. I'm glad someone can share that. Oh my God. I feel oh, like yeah. a freak half the time. Oh yeah. Nah, nah. Like I said, it, 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 it's, a, it's a part of the game. It's a part of the process. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, is, you know, I, I took my training so serious and um, you know, this was 2016. I was ran over by a forklift. Boy, and, uh, what? Because, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I got, I got guy wasn't looking where he was going, hit me full speed, uh, broke my shoulder. How fast you know, does a um, forklift go? Uh, forklift about you know uh, most places about five to ten miles an hour you know what i'm saying they're not like r ridiculously fast but the thing is, is a forklift weighs twice the amount of a car you know what i'm saying because it's got a lift and so the sheer force that he hit me with really fucked me up but the thing is is my size at that moment in time because i was actually preparing for a show i was so ridiculously thick in the back because of you know I, deadlifts are one of the most key important People will tell you not. I'll you know, disagree not with you because that's I suffer in a spine injury because of a deadlift, and it's. Well, been see, that's the thing too. Is like up for a year. Proper form and proper technique every time, because a lot of times you know I see people deadlift, and like I said, I didn't deadlift for massive weight. I deadlifted for thickness, and there's a difference. Like the highest I would probably go is three fifteen, but I was doing that three fifteen for like twenty reps. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to build not i'm trying to build depth you know what i'm saying like i uh, i don't need to build mass i'm already big but the thing is is you know like when you start building thickness by going those heavies and get those one one you know one you know prs that's not what you need to do when you do bodybuilding what you need to do is is repetition just like anything else to build a muscle guess what you when and when you're building muscle it's repetition it's repetition it's repetition it's perfect form perfect technique without stopping you know what I'm saying? So why would I do anything that I couldn't control or I couldn't easily lift? Because guess what? The first five, the first 10 are going to be all form and technique. But then as I start getting to that 12, 15, depending on how I'm feeling is how far I'm going to go with it. But the thing is, is that right there is what builds that depthness, the thickness of the back, because just like anything else, you're building the muscle repetition. One rep with massive amount of weight, it's going to build strength, but I'm not here to build strength. I'm here to build, you know, that, that muscle, that, that dexterity, that, that definition, that, that, that is what's needed in bodybuilding. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what a lot of people always end up doing. It's like, Oh, I'm going to deadlift this. I'm not like, I look, I don't ever go over this. And the reason I don't ever go over this is because this is the weight that I'm comfortable with, but this is the weight that's going to define me. You know what I'm saying? When you do a bicep curl, everyone tells, well, I'm curling fifties. I'm curling sixties. Like, look, you can get a crazy ass fucking pump. You can build huge ass fucking biceps with twenties. But controlled, steady, and proper form. Guess what? That the, you can have a much better bicep than the person over there swinging weight at fifty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's just one of those things. I see people all the time. I always, anybody can swing a weight, but it, it's someone it takes the right person to lift the weight. You know what I'm saying? Because that proper technique, that proper form, is what builds quality muscle. Because that's what I was always into doing. It's like when those guys were training me, they're like, look, they were breaking it down. Like, look, anybody can come here and lift weight. Anybody can come in here and, and throw away, but it's those people that are really paying attention to their definition, their technique, the ones that are slow and steady, building the proper muscle. Those are the people you can see that are just taking their time, doing it right, making sure they set themselves, position themselves. Like one thing I always check is my feet position. Feet position should always be pointed forward. You should always be in a neutral stance. And when you, once you hit that neutral stance, well, guess what? It lines your back up, it lines your stomach up. You pull your chest up, chest, chest up, chin high, and then you breathe in, you breathe out. And guess what that does? 
it sets you up to make you structurally sound before you lift. And because that structural soundness that you have, that, that, that full force, you're literally pulling up that kinetic energy from the ground to your muscle and building, you know, like much more, I, like I said, this is, this is all stuff that I, that I read into because as I was with bodybuilding and training, I was like, this shit makes sense to me. And because it made so much sense, it changed me so fast. And yeah. I was able to grow, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it, like with the people that I would train with me, because I would always do this, like, look, these are the hours I work out. If you show up, I'll train you. You don't have to do what I do, but understand that I'm going to point things out to you. And when I point them out, like fix your feet, fix your stance, chest up, chin high. And people were like, wait, what, 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 what? And I'd do it to the point where I never had to say it. And then once I never had to say it to them, I was like, you can work out on your own now. You know what you're doing. Don't you think people just need, uh, not, not necessarily to work out. I mean, obviously be healthy, of course. But yeah. more of the concept of like, do you think they need to be as passionate as you and I are about weightlifting? Like, obviously, you go into a little bit more of a science than I do. I know a lot about basically everything you're talking about. Like, I know yeah. anabolic windows. I know, uh, yeah. you know, amino acids. I've studied all that. I've done all that, all that workout type stuff, too. But a lot of people listening are like, oh, my God. It's like, I know my New Year's resolution should have been weightlifting. It's like, no. But finding something you're passionate about as we are passionate about this and anything that you do is going to fix a lot of issues. It's it, literally what I was saying. When we have that one hour or two hours where we block off, nobody talking to us. Same thing with podcasting. When we're talking, it's just me and you in a conversation. Nobody else in here. You know, there's no other insights. We know we can put our phones to the side and we just talk. Same thing with any – some. The reason why people text other people all the fucking time and they're on social media, it's 24 seven. They, they don't have a passion for something. They yeah. talk about, I'm passionate for cooking, <clears throat> but a lot of cooking is also stepping away and putting something on your phone. You need something that can literally take your full attention. And if you're into a craft that doesn't do that, it's not your craft. Yeah, no, that, and that's true. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, um, and th this is something that comes with age um, growing up. I grew up a man's man. I grew up like I'm a tough motherfucking dude. I came from the streets. I'm straight from the hood. I've fucking I heard done some you see the signs shit. of yeah. when something's gonna go down. You're gonna beat. I, oh, I yeah. was listening. I was like, I can relate. I can oh, yeah. relate. Oh yeah, and and that's the thing too. Is like, um, I was never pushed towards a passion. I was never pushed towards anything like a goal. You know what I'm saying? I was just lucky enough to like in my head, I was gonna be lucky enough. I was alive by the time I was 18 or in jail by I was 18. That's just kind of how I pointed my life at that moment in time. But as I got older and as I had started having kids, I was like, all I knew was work. All I knew was I got to make money. And then all of a sudden some shit happened. And then I was like, you know what? Life. That's when it clicked for me. I was like, life's too short. I actually need to do something with myself. And then I found bodybuilding and then I found training and then I found eating. And then I found all these different aspects of stuff. And then once I found podcasting, I was like, I like this. I like doing this. I, I kind of just started it off. Like my first episodes are me cranked to like a 20. That's and then you I at kinda, a 20? Oh, you, I don't know if you listened to, to my first ones, my the number one episode. I've listened to, I think, the probably the past like 10 or 15 you've put out recently. Yeah, well, if you go back to my number ones, because I have an episode that I almost got arrested doing my podcast. What number was that? Um, I couldn't tell you right now, but it, it, uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll say special uh, special episode or what's called. I didn't even number it. I just was like, because like I did a podcast, I posted the podcast, and then all of a sudden I'm getting dragged out of my car. Yeah. But, you know, it, and then from that point on, I kind of toned it down to a 10. And I was like, if I just stay at a 10, I'm not like, because I'm already a 10 at all times. But the thing is, is I was like, I need to project a little bit more. I need to be a little more intense. And so I was like, all right, let me scroll that back down to a 10 there. You know what I'm saying? 10, 11. I might hit that 11 every so often, but I always try to be at a 10. And so, you know, but what, I, once I start finding. What Fender amplifier are you frequent, was your frequency at? That's got 20 notches on that sucker. Oh, let me tell you right now, bro. I'm a fucking, I'm, I'm loud. I'm a beast. And the thing is, is anybody can tell me no, but doesn't mean I'm going to care. It doesn't mean I'm going to listen. I, like, uh, I'm the man of no fucks. No, there is nothing anybody can say to me that could make me give a fuck about them, give a fuck about their fucking personality, give, give a fuck. Like I said, when I like somebody, I like somebody. But if I don't like somebody, I'm going to let you know and not just let you know. I'm going to make you feel like shit. I'm going to make you feel like a small ass fucking person. I'm going to make sure that you understand. Don't fucking speak to me. Don't fucking talk to me. Don't get near my face. I'm going to make you feel worthless as shit. And the reason I do that is because if someone is in that level with me, 
I re it, it takes an awful lot to push me to that edge. Like I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, there's, I have no fucks to give, but once I start flying my fucks at you, you're definitely going to know it. And you're going to definitely know to never fucking cross my fucking path again. You know what I'm saying? I, I grew up in a place called Dakota, California, and it's a, it's a, it's a district of a city. I live in, I used to live in Union City and it's the biggest little city in the East Bay. It's one of the most craziest. If you have the ability to say, this is where I'm from and it's Dakota, everybody within the Bay Area in California will give you the respect of, have a good day, sir. And I'm going to move on. They will, not, like I said, I'm, I'm, I've, I've hung out with nothing but killers my whole life not not just killers i'm talking about legitimate fucking monsters that would not they would just stab you i've seen people get stabbed i've seen people get shot at i've seen people fucking just do horrible horrible fucking things but this is the life i grew up in you know what i'm saying and so seeing people get stabbed because i'm like close to baltimore and people go like that place is crazy i'm like every place is crazy if you let it Oh yeah, everything. But the thing is, it's only 14 streets of nothing but fucking family and monsters. Like, don't give a fuck. Like, literally, like prisons, all that around here. Like, if you say you're from here, you're one of the downest motherfuckers. That, like I said, we're literally whatever you say is what's about to happen. Yeah, but that, in my opinion, breeds excellence when it comes to the aspect of who you turn out to be. I know you can let it go wrong. Obviously, you oh, yeah. can let that kind of turn you in a bad way. But I feel like a lot oh, of yeah. them, they always talk about like hard times create even better people and it's like that's a hundred percent true i mean it is you don't want people to suffer hard times but at the same time it's also like you, if whatever you suffered through is you made a better life for your kids where they don't have to experience that and that makes them better people for that so then you're just creating a longer line of that and it's like that's what you got to keep in the mindset of things is the issue when nobody has an avenue or a craft to run down with is now everybody's got free time to poke flaws at everybody else. So now there's no yeah. growth anymore. We're literally yeah. reverting back in time. See, and, th and that is exactly why I'm at this point in my life, because I was so bred to commitment. I was so bred to what I say I do. I was like, if I speak it, understand it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And because I was in this hard place in these hard times, once I got to a certain age and I actually had my first kid and I was like, you know, I really need to step back because I didn't grow up with a dad. And because of that, I didn't want my kids to do that. I didn't want my kids to deal with that. And so, you know, I had my kids at a young age by time, right when I turned 18, I had my first son. I actually got a, like a real job. I started making real money and I started taking care of his mom and him. And I clicked in my head. I was like, I live this life. I know how difficult it is. And in my in where I grew up and lived, it's a cycle. It it continues. I I I do this. My kids do this with me. They understand the pride that we have from being from this place, and that they need to stick to it. But the thing is, is I stop that. I would never tell my son like, "Oh yeah, this." I was like, "No, shut up." And then I would hear my friends, their kids, their fam, my family, be like, "Hey," and I'm like, "No, no." Now my like I said, my my oldest son, he's 20, and he's nothing nothing like me i i swear he, he's a skinny nerd you know computer nerd fucking you know he, he's living his best life he's on his own but the thing is is i never gave him that shadowing of this is who i am this is who you, this is these are the steps you need to follow like no i'd always tell him what do you want to do with your life what do you want to grow up to be what's going on with you what makes you happy guess what pursue that be your own person i would guide him in the directions that I would think would be his best avenue, but you know what? It's up to him to steer that. And I never wanted that shadowing of my life to make him feel they needed to be a gangster or they needed to fucking do these rowdy, crazy fucking things. Cause sometimes he would be like, Oh dad, I hear you and your friend. Cause like, you know, me and my friends get together and we would talk about old times and he would glorify that. Be like, Oh, that sounds so cool. I'm like, no, that wasn't cool. That wasn't it. That was that's we survived. We were able to walk out of this situation and be okay. Most people didn't. You know what I'm saying? We're, I'm doing awfully well for someone who did horrible things. And I pray to fucking God every day that thank you. You know what I'm saying? Gave me the abilities to shadow these things from my kids. You know what I'm saying? And they live there. Like I said, every, every, uh, I always tell my kids they're soft because they're like, oh, I'm fucking this. And I'm, I'm like, no, you're not. 
<laughs> you play video games all day. You don't go outside. You enjoy your life. You you eat chicken nuggets. You know what I'm saying? You ain't sitting there eating top ramen every fucking depending, day like me. Look, depending where you're getting your nuggets from, they might have a tough life. Because I know Tyson's oh, like I said, got they, some they, good they, ones, but they, they, they well, they eating dino nuggets and and complaining when we don't got them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to say. Is like. You know, uh, I pulled myself out of that situation so they wouldn't have to be in that situation. And because of that, like they're living normal lives. You know what I'm saying? Like I was out stealing cars. I was out breaking into houses. I was beating people down because they looked at me wrong. I was fucking hurting people because they disrespected me and my city. I was fucking like constantly in fights. You know what I'm saying? I, I seriously damaged people in my life growing up because of this is where I'm from. This is who I am. This is what I'm supposed to be. I'm the guardian. I'm the gatekeeper. I, you know what I'm saying? I, like I had four of my best friends, five of my best friends, really. And all of us used to do gangster ass shit to get like, we'd literally wake up, get extremely high, get extremely drunk. What are we doing today? You know what I'm saying? And then take off on some not magical adventure, but like almost go to jail. Almost, you know what I'm saying? I've been shot at so many times that I wish I didn't have to say that. Yeah, I guess. I never pursued any of that stuff, like drinking a whole lot. Like I didn't really start drinking until ba that was my New Year's resolution. I would say not like go out insanely, but a, a nice few sips keeps the depression out of your head. I would say, you know, oh, as yeah, much as nah. the gym can kind of go. But uh, I got, I mean, there's uh, with over like the past year and everything that's happened. I mean, I had three friends die. I had like all this happened like a month, and I was just like you really put the grand picture into things where it's like, you're not invincible. You're not this person. And I think a lot of the issues that goes on to the world is how many kids out there, how many people in general don't have an idea of what the fuck they want to be when they grow up. And that's a big question. Even when you're 50, when you're 60, when you, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? That question still does not ring in their head correctly. And you start kind of paying attention to things. Like I think the best advice I've ever followed in my life is the fact that with being in isolation, a lot of times, like a hermit kind of where it's like, I've spent a lot of times with my thoughts, you know, not being able to sleep, you start to be able to be able to point through your life and see where it wants to go. What's the priority? What's things you start to understand better about people, you start to better understand situations. Anywhere in my town, I could have thrown my parents name somewhere and a door would have opened up. But I never used it because that was being part of them. I wanted to be my own self. And I don't know how many times they've tried to give me ideas like I don't want you doing this because you're going to do this. And it's like, you don't know what I'm going to be. You don't, that's, yeah. that's what I love is that aspect of how surprising you can be to anybody, even your closest family, but you have to truly find out what the hell you want to do. I have no clue. I'm still searching for that shit, but at the same time, like there's just this anger and despite in the world I always talk about. And I think a lot of that comes from these unsurmountable expectations that are put on your head and when you don't want to be that when you don't want to follow that you look at like a thug you do this whole other opposite lifestyle and there's other ways of getting there to the point where it's not like you don't have to be a criminal you don't have to do bad shit you don't have to do anything you just sit in your house all day but it's the aspect of like everybody tells you when you're a kid you're going to be fucking president you're going to be this, you're going to be that. And you know, sometimes those aren't the cars that you have. So then you already feel like you're starting off at the fucking fail line. Like you're failing already. It's like, let just people decide what the fuck they want to be. And don't, you don't have to be so PC where it's like, Hey, that's means everybody's feelings. No, sometimes your feelings should get hurt. But at the same time, understand, like you got to find out what the fuck you want to do. And that's the thing too, is like, you know, people don't give options out there. Like uh, my youngest son was like, I want to design computer games. I want to do this. And I'm like, look, if that's what you want to do, guess what it requires. And I've always pushed every one of my kids. Like, look, what do you, it, it, it doesn't matter what you want to do, what you like, you know what I'm saying? Like point in that direction. You know what I'm saying? There's ways to make money for everything. But the thing is like, I didn't, like I said, right now I'm doing everything that I enjoy in life because I learned what I started liking. What, and then I tried to be like, I'm going to make money with what I'm liking. I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to fucking work towards that goal, you know, and I've had all these business plans and stuff done, but the thing is, is, you know, Corona, you know, everything gets put on hold, but the thing is, is I'm pursuing something that I have fun with. Like I have a great job. I, I fucking go to work, all that stuff. And it, it it's, you know, it, it, I, I don't hate going to work, but the thing is, is I, the job that I have is because I have a basic education. I have the basic knowledge. I have this, this is the job that I can have, but with my kids, 
it's not just like, hey, there's jobs for everything. There's degrees for everything. But the thing is, is what do you want to do? You know, my youngest son, he says, I want to be a mechanic now. Well, guess the fuck what? After you finish high school, my younger son, I was like, go to trade school. We'll look at trade schools. We'll look at this. Because, you know, there's trade schools for mechanics, construction, plumbing, all, all this stuff. And there's a bit like crane operators. You can go to school to be a crane operator, make all kinds of fucking money. But the thing is, is what is it you're going to want to do when you get there? And so by providing their horizons of, let's do this. Let's do like, I do a YouTube channel with my younger son, Anthony, and it's called Team Bowman Snack Attack. And I do the majority of the work, but the thing is, is we do the recordings together. And so like, he's like, you know, I want to stream video games. I want to stream, people make money doing this shit. But the thing is, is if you don't have the interest or the drive to do it or the ability to be like, I'm going to learn how to do it. Because a lot of times it's trying to figure out how to start. And since you can't figure out how to start, you never start. And so the thing is, is I always try to get past this difficulty, get past this issue, get past this problem, figure it out, watch some YouTube videos, wa- you know, read it online, see what it needs to be done. That's a because lot of work, if you, man. It is a lot, lot of work, but That's the thing is you have, you have to do the work because if you want to do anything, just like bodybuilding and just like working out, every, you first you start off really hard. You don't know how to do it, but guess the fuck what? You learn. That's what people up. give you the answer though, is that's a lot of work. And I'm like, then you don't yeah. want to fucking do it. You know, yeah. you're going to put that, in the effort if you really want to. Yeah. And that's what I always tell my kids. You show me the effort. I'm going to assist you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to push you in that direction. I'm not going to do all the work, but guess the fuck what? Oh, you like that? Guess what? Uh, oh, you're good to go. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. You're just giving this pushing motion of like, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Boom, motherfucker, you got that shit. I think there's a point where you start to realize that learning and watching everything around you unfold, you start to gain an enhanced point of knowledge where school can't teach you that. And I think that's kind of what me and you both can agree on is very important. Yes. Like you have ever come across someone in life where it's like, did you ever get anything more than a school education? Like you have no street knowledge, you have no common sense. And I think that's what happens when you start kind of working off the old school methods of what life used to be like but we're so advanced yep. now if you don't wake the fuck up sometimes you're like next thing you know you're in a car accident next thing you know you don't know what yeah. to do it's because you're not paying attention to what's going on around you and that's it see and i've always been like growing up i've uh, never been book smart but i'm hand smart if someone shows me something i can easily do it and do it better you know what i'm saying someone shows me how to do something like i i can read a book doesn't mean i'm gonna fucking get it but if I'm physically being shown how to do something, I'm like, oh, shit, I could fuck it. I got it now. Or I can, and after that, I could visualize it and do it just a little different or a little faster or a little better. And, you know, I, I take that method that I have and I show, that's why I show the kids like, hey, let's do this. Hey, this is how I edit a video. This is how I do my audio. This is how I upload. This is how I fucking, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I got a gym in my garage. I'm like, oh, look, this is how I work out. This, you know, the. I, I give them the ability to try things. And because I see them trying things, it gives me a lot of effort because it, or a lot, a lot, a lot of happiness because I'm like, all right, they're not like just giving up. You know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes that giving up, I'm like, ah, oh, what the fuck are we supposed to do now? You know what I'm saying? Well, I think that failure of defeat, even though how bad it is, I think people are just comfortable with it now. Like it's just gonna be up. Oh, I'll just work on something else. It's like, what, what? pick it back up. Like back in the day, like, you know, when you played an instrument or something, you kept playing that shit. You didn't just give up after five minutes and you'd punch your hand out of anger on the fact that you couldn't get your fingers in the right position. It's like, you got to continue with that shit. You can't just be like, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Same thing with video games, same thing with anything. You're going to keep retrying that level over and over and over again. Now, listening to your show, for instance, you rant about a lot of stuff and I think it is all needed, but I think it comes from a perspective, not out of anger, out of passion. You are calling out bullshit. And I think that's what people need in life. You ever been to a store and some person is just the rudest motherfucker you've ever met. I mean, the whole concept of, come on, hurry up. I watched a, a Karen, we can say a young Karen, an exact image of one literally just yell at a 70 year old woman. Who's working at a store by herself, just trying to like stock shelves. She's like, um, excuse me. I'm over here ringing the bell. And I'm just like, I got to call bullshit on this. I got to say something. And like, I don't say anything. Don't say anything. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is when you say something. Cause we can't, yeah, exactly. People can't act. Don't do this again. Oh, like this is this is shit that needs to be corrected or it's like a kid playing on their phone in the middle of a diner or something. You're not supposed to have your volume all the way up. You're supposed to turn it down if you're going to play it. Yeah, no, and th- that's exactly the truth is. Call 
anything out on bullshit, especially if it affects me or if it's just something that's just so outlandish that someone if someone needs to say something, because if you don't say anything, it's just going to go unchecked the rest of their life. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a lot of times that people feel entitled to be able to do and say whatever they want. Well, guess what? There, there's consequences to that. And I'm more than willing to make people feel uncomfortable, cause a fucking scene to fucking just, you know, make it seem like it's more than it needs to be. And I can give a fuck less. You know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck am I? You know what I'm saying? They, oh, I'm going to have you on camera. I'm going to, well, what are you going to do? Get me fired? No. You're going to fucking, oh, you're going to fucking shut down my podcast? No. Are you going to fucking get me off social media? Who gives a fuck? I'll just start it again. You know what I'm saying? They, so, it, it, there's just so many cancel culture people that are like, I have this behind me. It's like, no, you fucking don't. No, because what are you going to do? Honestly, what are you going to do? Uh, just because I called you a piece of fucking shit. Have you ever just because been I fucking threatened said, with yeah. being canceled before? I've been canceled before, but guess the fuck what? I came right back. <laughs> I've gotten like threatened, I think maybe twice. One person I denied as being a guest because I started going on their Twitter, which I never yeah. do. I don't like talking to people before the episode. I like to find out all yeah. this amazing information during it. Like that's what makes a really good conversation is when you're actually trying to understand somebody, learn from them. Yeah. And I looked on their Twitter and like I was like, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And they just kept messaging me like 80 times. And it was during my workout. And I was like, Yeah. All right, look, I said tomorrow, like, what, are you making fun of me because I have mental illness? And then that's what got me. When they said yeah. that, I stopped and I said, I have severe depression and it's nothing yeah. to fucking use as a crutch. And they yeah, took exactly. that and they posted it on social media. And then I started getting attacked by a bunch of people where I'm like, just listen to my fucking episodes. Yeah. They all talk about mental health sometimes. You know, I'm passionate about that because I believe everyone can get it. It's fucking terrible if you have it. It's something hard to do. But I saw the Twitter and it was all politics. And I'm like, yeah. same thing. Election just happened. My big yeah. thing to everybody was like, it's not going to affect your immediate life. You're still yeah. going to go to fucking work. You're still going <laughs> to have your life. Yep. You're going to come down, have the same steak, turkey, whatever fucking dinner that you want. It might affect some other things out there, but you're not immediately going to change. So why are you crying? Why are you being so upset about everything that's going on? Shut the fuck up and do your shit. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. I mean, it is true. <laughs> it is true. It's it, it's the way it's supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? P it's, people feel so entitled. People feel like, well, I'm like, nah, guess what? No, no. Oh, you're going to fucking uh, look. If we were face, and I always say this too, if we were face to face, you wouldn't say this to me. And so because of that thought, I never worry. Like, like I always let stuff like just fly by. I, I've had a few people like uh, I do a second podcast with my wife called I Married a Bigfoot. And it's just us watching videos. Well, I post these videos with what we're talking about. So you can see what we're talking about in these videos. And this guy emails me or doesn't email me. He writes in a comment. Hey, I own this video. You're going to, you have to pay me $750 to use this video. So I, I like this comment. I hired it and I just moved on. And then later that day, I got a community strike on YouTube saying that, Hey, you have this thing. So guess what I fucking did. I went through the fucking the video that I had saved. I cut out the fucking literally just all I did was just cut out that section. Save seven hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, and yeah, yes. Yeah, not even seven hundred fifty. Look, uh, this guy it was a big. <laughs> I video. love it. I love it because you grabbed your chest, and that's what I do before yeah. I start going yeah. off yeah. on something. Yeah. So you know, it's a Bigfoot video, and I didn't even pull it from his website or his YouTube video. I pulled it off of a completely different news article site. So regardless of whoever the fuck this guy is, he doesn't, I don't know him shit because it's on a complete, it's on the web. It's on the internet. It's fucking free. If he owned copyrighted material and he would have emailed like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. I saw this and guess the fuck what, you know, it, it, this is what I normally charge. Well, guess what? I'd email. I apologize. I'm sorry. I will pull it down. Once again, I am sorry, but that's not what he said. He was like, you owe me this and this. And, this. and so, like I said, I went through it. I pulled it off fucking cut it out and then i made a whole youtube or uh, angry dad podcast about it saying fuck this motherfucker fuck this piece of shit if he would have came at me correct guess what it's a different fucking story but it's not a different fucking story he fucking hit me with this shit so he can go fuck himself you know what i'm saying and i even said in the podcast like look if this, if this guy wants to come see me let him come see me but he ain't going to because i don't give a fuck how old how young how stupid what fucking he looks like i'll beat him to fucking death for fucking coming at me like that you know what I'm saying? If you're professional, I'll be professional. But if you're going to fucking try and then delete your comment after you fuck. No, you already put it up. 
it's already up. Let it be seen. You know what I'm saying? I, and so after I did that, I fucking like, all right, let me actually look this person up because me and my wife complimented this video. We're like, oh man, this is a great video. Look at this and this. And as soon as I Googled him, fake fraud, this, the, he uses the same costume. Like every comment was this guy's a piece of shit. So I'm like, oh, guess the fuck what? He's a piece of fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? I tagged him in the video that I made. I fucking tagged him in my fucking, I was like, guess what? I posted it on Instagram. I posted it on fucking Twitter. I put, guess what? Look at it now. What are you going to fucking say? And guess what he doesn't say? Doesn't say shit. Doesn't say shit. I've, you would think somebody I've, who has a video. I've never had that with a comment, but I've had that with another podcaster. I tried to get on as a guest. There's like a lot of people take it as a science or they take it as a sense of professionalism. And I tell people like, I'm in this for fucking fun because I love yeah. meeting people like yourself that just get me like smirking at the grin. Cause this is like fucking, I, I can relate on so many levels, but yeah. um, it's crazy. Cause like I had someone like before we recorded during like, I think it was like March or something like that when this thing was first kind of happening and everything. Um, and he was like promoting that he was going to be on the show. And I'm like, dude, my recordings, like I record like 12 in a day to where like, I, yeah. it, it might be posted next week or the week before. And he was like screaming at me, then just starts making a video, like talking shit on me. And I'm like, I just comment. I was like, consider it canceled and i was just over it but yeah. like it shows the point of like how far someone will do something to just get to a fucking tension and just try and either cut at you or do whatever they feel like to get they can take you out of the game and i'm like just oh, yeah. fucking leave do your own shit it's so easy yeah it is so easy you know but and uh, like i said it's just it, it's just hilarious because like i said i if I owe somebody something and you came at me correctly, guess what? I'm going to fucking, uh, in, in a business manner, in a business sense, understand that I'm a businessman. But at the end of the day, if you really want to bring that bad side out of me, <laughs> understand that there's no fucks given after that fucking point. There's no filter. There's no holds bar. I'm going to fucking, fucking hurt you as hard as I, I want to make sure that you understand that I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? If I lose my channels, if I lose my, get, like yeah, I pay for my podcast to be, to be up. And so guess the fuck what? You can't take that down because I pay for it. There's wait, no wait, community wait, where do you guidelines. Pay for a... Where do you pay for that? Um, I use Spreaker. Spreaker is uh, the podcast platform I use because it's almost like a network where I can control multiple shows from from my RSS feed. So I can literally have, like I have four shows and with those four shows, I can literally produce them all from one app and not have multiple different channels. And so with that, it gives me the ability to you know archive my episodes and never lose them so I can upload them, download them whenever I want and, you know, and be able to control everything from a central hub. See, I only cite that I use Anchor, so all my stuff just gets uploaded to Spotify and stuff. Oh, like yeah. It's, it's free and easy, but, like, the one site that wanted me to pay was Buzzsprout. I'll never be on Buzzsprout because you have to pay, I think, 60-something dollars for, like, 12 hours of uploading content. I'm like, I yeah. post a fucking hour to two hours a day. Like, I'd be done with that yeah. in five days. Like, that doesn't make sense exactly. to me. No, no, no. And then that, that's what it is too, is like, uh, because like, uh, I, um, you know, when I had multiple podcasts and I would have to have multiple, like, you know, logins, all this stuff. And what the thing was with Spreaker is it literally, I can record with my phone. I can record on my laptop. I can record it on my computer. I can, but the thing is, is it's all one central site and not like, you know, I have to have all these passwords and all these emails and all these different things for it. I can literally just control it from my own network you know what I'm saying? My own little hub. And it just, it's so much easier too, because they take a lot of the, 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 like it, if I chose, like, cause I do audio and video versions of both of all my podcasts and it gives me ability to just post audio to YouTube and also to just, you know, not post it and do my videos so I can edit my videos and post my videos on there. So they line up, but it, 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 and I prefer speaker because it's, it, it, it's, it's so much more refined in the ability to have ease with it because you know when you get to be about my age comfort and easeability is something that is precious where you don't have to hassle with shit you know well, what everything's I'm saying? so fucking new even for me i feel like my grandparents trying to work this shit like half the time i have people asking me like i can't how do i do this how do, I do this i'm like dude i 
took me forever to figure out audacity to the point where I can just manage getting through it. Like if I get a crazy audio connection or something, but everyone's using like these mix master at ne- eventually I just ship it on to the next person. Where like my buddy makes videos for your mom's house podcast and stuff. Yeah. I just send him to him. Like, can you edit this to like where it matches up? Like I had a conversation with a dude in India and in the background, he legit had parrots that were screeching. And I'm like, can you fix that? Like, I don't know yeah. how to do that. And he's like, I got you. I'm like, you do that professionally. Me, I'm over here fucking ISIS basement with the black curtain behind me where I'm just <laughs> chatting it up. That's it. I don't, that's all I want to do. See, and, and like I said, that that's why like I like the spree crap because well, also too, I don't edit. I don't, I usually just nip the front and the end, the dead air off in the beginning and the end. And that's it. That's all I do. But um, like I said, I do everything from my computer. I, Cause like when I first started podcasting, I went from just doing it on my cell phone to do you know, wanting better audio, bought a little mic for my phone. And then I went to using a laptop with a better mic. And then it got to the point where I was like, I really needed like the, um, the, the laptop couldn't handle the load of what I was doing. So I ended up buying a new Mac, uh, you know, a desktop. And, and then I was like, fuck, now I learned how to, I literally, it's just all self-taught. I've had friends that have other podcasts that are like, I'm like, how do you do this? How do you do? And so they'll be walking me through it through over the phone. I'm like, Oh, thank you. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's just like, as I progressed and got better and really started producing more episodes, I was like, I, I really need to step up my game and do my audio and stuff like that. I have a couple you know, like, of questions for you. Some deep ones. Are you ready for them? Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready I, when I, you're ready. So my idea here is I had a thought of like, I think, you know, people say the purge, like the movie had a good concept of like one night where you get to release all your stress. I watched yeah. a fucking video in Italy where it was an orange festival and it was a bunch of people with things of oranges on horse carriages and just beating the shit out of each other with oranges, just grabbing one and tossing yeah. at people like baseballs and shit. I was like, that's the best stress relief. But my questions for you are one, what were you saying in that episode that got you pulled out of a fucking car? Um, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times it's just me screaming and cussing about in those first episodes is like, I hate people with no common sense. <laughs> and when I mean no common sense, I'm talking about like, there's no decency in them to understand what common sense is like to, to, to acknowledge that you did something or like, Oh, I fucked up. Or like, you know, you shouldn't have done what you just did. And so a lot of those, that's what the, the, my first few episodes are always about. It's like, common sense and, and not just common sense, but like me talking about what I would do to these people if I could, or what I would do to these people if they tried me, how I would hit them in the head with a ball peen hammer, how I would not give a fuck about breaking someone's fingers, breaking someone's arm, smashing their fucking you got head. Descriptive. Then, yeah. Well, that, that, that's what I'm trying to say is like, that's how much then. And, and also too, that's how I grew up. You know what I'm saying? I grew up being fucking, well, I got to make a point. Bro, and how do you make a point? You fuck them up to the that, point where no one else will ever fucking care. That reminds me, there was a guy that got arrested, and you can watch the court trial on YouTube. And as he's getting arrested, they're like, it was for a murder. He had the murder scene tattooed on his chest. Yeah. So it was everything, him shooting the gun, killing the guy at the 7-Eleven was all at his, on his fucking chest. Yeah. He's like, just take your shirt off, dude. And the guy's like, what? He goes, the attorney's like, take your shirt off because you have the crime scene on your fucking chest. You're guilty. And it, yeah. that's what you, when you're describing all that in detail, I'm like, a cop is just going to be listening like, oh, this is how the dude was fucking oh, yeah. killed. He's oh, straight know, up telling us where he buried the weapon. Oh, yeah. You know, but like the, also too, like I said, the, the, when I first started doing the podcast, that's why I was like really referencing how I feel, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, like, you know, I will be very descriptive of how I feel about people and how I feel about situations, which I have no issue with. But the thing is, is at those moments in times, I was like, and it, it, and after that point, I literally made signs because, um, and uh, let me actually set the, um, the stage for that episode, um, my kids go to school. And so when I would pick the, my old, my youngest son up from school, cause he gets out first, um, he would get out at two Oh five every day. And so if I was not at the school one hour before school got out, I couldn't find a parking spot. I, you can't park. So, you know, what I would normally do is I'd go to the school, park my car, set an alarm, take a little nap, fun, fumble with my phone. And in the beginning stages of me podcasting, I literally had an hour, hour and a half to kill. And that's when I started recording podcasts is I would show up to the front of the school and I would park across the street. I wouldn't park in front of the school, but I'd park across the street 
and I would start recording these podcasts and I was doing like 15 minutes at a time. And then I, you know, eventually I started doing a little more at a time, but, um, I'm recording this fucking podcast and, you know, and as I'm recording this podcast, some will park behind me and they call, and they're the ones that had to call the cops on me. I'm just, you know, adding the numbers up two plus two is four. So, you know, and um, I'm done reporting my podcast and I'm using the school Wi-Fi to upload it to YouTube and to, to Spreaker. And so when that happened, um, you know, I just kind of glimpsed out of the co- in my mirror and I'm like, what the fuck is he in the cop? I look behind me, cop pulls a gun on me, drags me out of the car. And, you know, he drags me out of the car, like, blah, 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 you know, like, blah, give me the whole spiel. And I'm like, first of all, you didn't fucking ID me. First of all, you didn't ask me any fucking questions. First of all, you didn't even fucking check to fuck. You're just taking the word of what somebody fucking said that I'm saying something or I'm doing something. You didn't even verify who the fuck I was. You didn't even fucking check to see if this was right or this is real. No, you pulled a fucking gun on me and you dragged me out of my fucking car. Obviously, I know how tall I am. Obviously, you know, for those who can't see, I'm fucking tatted the fuck back. I got a huge fucking beard. And this motherfucker is just pulling me out of the car and handcuffing me because he's scared for his life. I'm like, you're the fucking one with a gun. You know what I'm saying? As a police officer, plain and fucking simple. It's your job to verify and check, not be fucking scared. If yours was an issue, then why'd you fucking pull a gun on me? Why didn't you wait for more fucking cops to show up to fucking handcuff me and to check me and to fucking make sure everything's legit instead of just dragging me out of my fucking car, embarrassing me in front of the fucking school, making me late to pick up my fucking son because you don't know what the fuck your job is. And that's exactly what the fuck happened. It was even worse is one of the fucking officers that were there was a friend of mine. He was a friend of mine. He was a rookie fucking cop. And the cop, he's sitting there telling him, I know this guy. He's cool. It's fine. And they're like, no, we need to fucking bear. They run my ID, run my fucking license plates. And guess the fuck what? Clean. Nothing fucking wrong. Not even a fucking parking ticket. And yet, no fucking apology. Yet, no fucking telling me, oh, we're sorry. No, it's fucking re- release me and then let me go get my fucking son. And like, I'm going to fucking act like it's all fucking K. Of course, I call the fucking staff sergeant. I call the fucking, like, what the fuck? And he, even he was like, well, you know, I'm like, no, there's no well you fucking know. He didn't even ask me for my fucking D. He didn't even fucking check to see who I was. He didn't even check to see if the situation was real. He just fucking drew his gun on me, dragged me out of my fucking car, handcuffed me, searched my car. And then a half hour later, checked to see who the fuck I was. At this point in the show, if there's any kids listening, I want you to go back about five minutes and don't listen to all that fucking that was going on and being so <laughs> scared. Imagine if I was a family show. No, but um, yeah. dude, that yeah, that was cancel culture before it was cancel culture. There is an issue with that. Yeah. I think a lot of the times, I mean, I can get from both perspectives, everything, but they shouldn't have yeah. pulled you out like that. But at your yeah, kids no, they shouldn't have. too, that's fucked up. Yeah. Well, then that's the thing too, is like after that, because like he, even the principal knew I recorded up because I told her, I was like, look, I'm going to record a podcast out here. I'm out here. You might hear me every so often because I'm going to be yelling, but I roll up my windows and I actually made signs with magnet magnets on it. But like, and I put them on the every side of my fucking car to say, hey, Angry Dad podcast, podcast in recording. At least you did the professional route with it. I mean, it, 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 like I said, it's just it, it, like I, I was doing shit before anyone would show up and then I would post it before my kids you got an hour to kill. I get it. E- exactly. And so, but the thing is, like, I knew what I was talking about and I knew what I was saying. But at the same fucking time, I was always being courteous about everyone around me. You know what I'm saying? And even the principal was like, hey, Ben, I know you do this. I listened to your podcast. I really like it. But do you mind? either recording it around the corner or down the street or not in front, like no problem. So like literally before I would, I would show up a half an hour and a half early record in front of a fucking park and then pull back into my fucking spot to fuck away from my kids. Because like I said, it, I, I, and before I even did it, I asked, I told them and they're like, yeah, that's fine. But it was, it's the fact that someone else fucking called the cops on me and they didn't fucking check on me. Do you want to know what I think of you? Did that. You're a great fucking dad for showing up to school an hour fucking early. If I was a parent, I'd be like, no, I'll sh- I'll do what my parents didn't show up an hour after, or I'll just get a call from you later saying I forgot you at school. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, one thing I've always done in my life is make sure that I'm present for my kids. You know what I'm saying? Because like, a, you know, um, I have three kids with my first ex-wife and I have one kid with my second ex-wife. But the thing is, is um, when my three kids... You know, I worked to the point where I was never home for my oldest son 
because uh, I work, used to work at a place called U.S. Pipe and Foundry. And um, I would work six days a week, 12 hours a day in the most brutalist conditions you could ever think of. Like li- literally molten iron. You ever seen Terminator 2? I have. You remember that end scene where like there's all that molten iron? That's what I used to do. That's You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and I would be there almost be- between because a man- it was mandatory 6-12. So that's six days a week, 12 hours a day. And a lot of times I would stay 16, 15 hours. A couple of times I stayed 18 hours. You know what I'm saying? And I would do that every week. I'd have maybe like one to two Sundays off a month. You know what I'm saying? Because I would just needed to work. Being 18 years old, having a kid, needing to take care of business. Well, you know, I just worked, worked and worked. And See, um, this is what I, this is what I thought you wanted to message me about, about the episode that you might have had an issue with where I was like, all right, what did I say was when I was yeah. talking to Brad about this exact thing, like the way you're talking about is that you worked your ass off, not necessarily being there for your firstborn, but more on the concept of making sure they had a house. He had everything. And I was yeah. like, that's what Jordan Peterson was talking about, the wage gap difference with the gender yeah. pay. It's like because yeah. a, a, as, a, as a, a man feels like they need to do that. Where a woman's like, it's all about the emotional connection. And that's what they were yeah. basing it off of. I'm like, that's fucking proven and everything like that. Yeah. No, no, it is. And that's the thing too, is like, I grew up in that mindset. I grew up in that mentality where men take care of business. You know, my, my first ex-wife never worked a day in her life. I supported and took care of everything because I worked those hours. But it was also the downfall of my family at that time because, you know, I didn't know better. I'm a fucking teen. I fucking, you know what I'm saying? 18 years old working in this fucking harsh environment. I literally had enough time to come home, eat and go right back to sleep to wake up the next day to go to work. And so, you know, I, t- I pay, I gave her the money. She paid the bill. She took care of business. But the thing is, is because of that in that happening. Um, and once I quit that job and I actually got a regular job, like an eight hour job, I was like, what am I f- fucking missing you know what i'm saying with all my other kids i was like when my old were my first two oldest kids i didn't go to fucking you know i didn't go to you know field trips i didn't go to parent teacher meetings i didn't fucking you know spend time with them i was always constantly working and because of that and i with my other kids i was like no no i will not do that anymore I make the time. I will go with them. I will fucking go to these teacher teacher parent conferences. I will make sure that I make every effort to be in their lives because I missed out. And you know, my oldest son, he understands. He he he's you know, like of course there's gonna be some regret there that I wasn't emotionally or physically there because all I did was work. But the thing is, is we have a better relationship now because he understands that. And with my other kids, it's like I make sure that I'm involved heavily in their lives. You know, what I'm saying with my oldest son. The only thing I was there to do was I coach and manage baseball. You know what I'm saying? On those days, I would have baseball meetings, baseball managing teams. And, you know, I would be like, I'm leaving work. I don't give a fuck. And then I, that was about the extent that I did with my oldest son. You know what I'm saying? But with all my other kids, like, no, I'm 100% there and focused on them to help them with what we're fucking doing. You know what I'm saying? It's, and it, it's hard to do that and manage a, a manly life. And, like, there's a lot of life lessons that I learned growing up because I didn't know them, you know what I'm saying? I had to do a lot of growing myself as I got older, you know what I'm saying? Cause like yeah. no one taught me emotions. No one taught me how to handle emotions. No one taught me how to speak emotions. No one told me that I had to use my emotions. You know what I'm saying? I was just a cold hearted fucking killer for so fucking long. And then once I started having kids, I'm like, I took that mentality of this is how I work. You know what I'm saying? And not realizing that's not the right fucking way. That's why I said you're so passionate about the things that you talk about and stuff, because you can kind of see it, too. I mean, we're living in an era now where I don't think maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago, anybody would expect it to be at the point we're at now. where like everybody's so on tension all the time, but nobody's channeling their emotions out properly. It's why I'm talking about like get into a craft, get into something you love, do something you love. I mean, the aspect of like my parents were DJs and they both worked two jobs. So next thing you know, yeah. I'm spending a lot of time alone. And for so long, I was so angry. But like you said, once your kid got older, once I got older, I realized like, oh shit, you were doing something, making sure I had a home to live in, making sure you never yeah. had to worry about this. It pisses me off with the honor roll thing where like all the parents that have like 80,000 honor roll stickers on their car. Where yeah. I'm just like, all right, dude, really? Like, do you need that many? Cause the one time I struggled so fucking hard to get honor roll, dude. I mean, I worked my ass off sixth grade freaking. I just made it. Like we were going through papers and the teacher was like, I know you're really trying. I saw you work all year hard for this. Um, Let's see if we can find some of those papers. So I give you some credit. So I was getting threes, fours and fives out of tens yeah. on stuff. Next thing you know, I got it just to a 69. I was like, yeah, fuck 
Yes. So then nice. I go, I'm like ready for my honor roll sticker to get my report card. Yeah. They don't give it to you the last semester, the last term. They oh. don't do honor roll stickers. And I'm like, <gasps> and I literally was like about to like have an emotional, like there's a wire in my yeah. head that just snapped. Yeah. And my teacher saw how like upset I was getting where I was about to like kill some people. And she grabbed one from the back and gave it to me. He was like, put this on your, 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 your I know that how much this means to you yeah. for your parents to show this off. I'm like, fuck yeah. Put it yeah. on back of my dad's go. truck. Two days later, got repoed, never saw it again. I said, fuck uh, it, not do an honor roll ever again. That was your only <laughs> shot. Fuck it. Yeah, that's it. Now, sometimes that's how it happens. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, with, with, with the shit going on, like I said, I, you know, I was never the smartest, but I was always the strongest. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, it's, well, with school for me, it was like, I'm not good at this. I'm, I, I, can, I can learn on my own through doing this, for instance. Yeah. I've pulled more education out of this than I have doing uh, just sitting in a school environment. So I was like, this is the issue with people is that we need to find a craft, find something that we're interested in that will actually get us hooked rather than something that just passes the time away. You can work your ass off. Yeah, afford a nice home and stuff. But if you never get to actually sit and enjoy it, you're never really going to truly be happy. Am I right? That's it. That's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I always try to show my kids is like, look, to be happy is to just enjoy what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because I always see them, they're stressed, you know, um, um, you know, my daughter lives with her mom and, you know what I'm saying? I can see her stress and this and this and this. I was like, no, when you come here, it's a safe pace. We're going to enjoy, be who you want to be, do what you want to do. And guess what? We're going to have fucking fun. And that's just how, you know, I always try to make sure that my kids understand that. Like this little slice of heaven is your youth and enjoy it and have fun with it and understand that we're going to grow together with it. You know what I'm saying? Raising a daughter is one of the hardest parts of being a father, being, but boys is easy as fuck. Yeah, you can't Girls, just, not easy. You can't just lock them in the car anymore. I still think yeah. that there are some points you can do that. I mean, come on now. No, nah, no, nah, they're and when they're to a certain age, you know what I'm saying? Babies, no, but if you he's know, 14 like when, when and he's being an asshole, exactly. you roll the you windows up and you sit out there. And, and he's lucky if I roll the windows, uh, roll the windows down a crack, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, cars nowadays, once you lock it, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true, you can't, dude. That is the uh shittiest part about newer cars is the fact that you don't know how to open them sometimes. Like, I was sitting there, yeah. I was like, where's the opening thing? I don't, there's no door handles, like, you have to touch the top of the car twice and the door will open up. I'm like, that's. That's bullshit. That's too much. Yeah, it's weird because like uh, we just person we just recently purchased a new car, and as soon as I don't even have to you, you before you'd have to always hit the clicker to fucking unlock the door. You don't even do that now. As soon as you get close enough to the car, the car just unlocks. I'm like, do, do, what the what? You know what I'm saying? And what's even worse is like I get in the car. I don't. Need, there's no fucking key. You just step on the fucking brake and push the start button, and that's it. That's what I'm saying. And they say they let you know the key fob is still in the car when the door shuts or something. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. the key fob is in my pocket. So there's no way it's still in the car. So next thing I know, I had to get my car reset because it was telling mm -hmm. me the key fob was still in the vehicle. And I'm like, so now my car is never going to unlock. It's never going to, it's, it's like, ah. Exactly. That's, that's why I love, I have a, there's a 2002 I'm using right now, a Toyota. And dude, at, it, even when it's 20 degrees out, I get in, I know that bitch is going to start every single <laughs> hey. time. I got a 98 Toyota Tacoma, 350,000 miles, runs like a fucking champ. It's a workhorse, bro. And I fucking, like I said, I, I tried and true, no matter how many times I go out there, it'll start the fuck up and take me where I need to fucking go. You call them old reliable. Old reliable. You know what I'm saying? Oil change and I'm good to go. All right. So my second question is, do you remember what type of forklift hit you? Yeah, um, it was um, a Raymond. A Raymond's what hit me. It was, uh, there's crowns. Crowns are typically black and, and tan. Raymond's are red and black. And so that's what ended up hitting me. It ended up hitting me uh, forks first. Look, it, luckily, I always, you know, um, where I work, they're a little liberal on not wearing steel toe boots, but because uh, I, I wear a size 16, I always wear boots. I always wear my work boots. I don't give a fuck. I paid so much money for them. They're comfortable. I can wear them all fucking day. They're a great pair of steel toes. And uh, I can resole them, but I uh, I had my boots on, the, and I was I was wrapping a pallet on the dock where I was working, and I was more than enough out of the way for no one to hit me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like I'm completely, and this is five minutes before I have to get off of work because I get to go home. I had five minutes to clock out and go home. That's literally I'm literally wrapping up the last pallet, getting ready to go home. And I'm wrapping it, and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm on the floor. And the next thing you know, fucking uh, the fire department wakes me up to, so I can put myself, because he couldn't pick me up. They had to wake me up to put myself on the fucking gurney. And then I wake up in the hospital, and then next thing you know, they're shoving me in a fucking MRI machine, 
and it's fucking like the i ended up getting like maybe six or seven shots of dilated because it hurt so fucking much you know what i'm saying how did that feel in dilated i didn't feel anything until after like the almost the sixth shot it had to feel good though man come on Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Trust me. I was loaded, bro. I've heard fucking, people I, I, talk I, about that drug and they're like, it's the best thing in the fucking world. I was like, damn. I was like, yeah, there's no drugs that are should be legal that do that to you. Well, and that's one of those things, too, is like, uh, I'm because I'm big. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm very, you know, I used to be extremely muscular, but 300 pounds at that time. And I, um, I hate taking pen medication. But the thing is, the reason I hate taking it is because I have to take a lot of it to get any kind of pain relief. So unless let's I have a headache, you know, headache, you know, like Tylenol and stuff that it, it, it does its trick, but to actually get rid of physical pain, like they'll give me like, oh, we're gonna give you a 500 this or 800 this. I'm like, don't bother because it, it doesn't do shit for me. I can fucking eat those like candy and not feel a goddamn fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? And so like when they were giving me all this Dilaudid, they're like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, I don't feel anything. And then I, once he started getting them higher doses, I'm like, oh, okay, now I feel them. I had a dentist thing uh, just the other day. I had to get a tooth taken out. And like, first thing, oh. you know, right? I was like, I'm doing this right after a workout, right after I get a shake in me. Yeah. I'm just going to go there. Dude, he puts the IV and my veins are pretty noticeable on my hands and stuff. Yeah. I had pretty like, I don't know if you can tell through the yeah. thing. But oh, yeah. Very. Yeah. I have a, a just very uh, veiny, I would say. It looks like I would be a drug dealer. Vascular. Yeah. Vascular. Yeah. Um, but as he's putting in the needle, he misses. And I'm like, fuck, that hurt. Like, there's a bruise on my wrist from yeah. it. And then he goes, all right, you ready? I'm going to do it now. He goes, this is going to knock you out. You'll still be awake. You'll be able to talk, but you're not going to remember yeah. this. As he's doing it, I'm like, do you know what song is playing right now? And he goes, what? It's fucking Adele singing hello from the other <laughs> side and i'm like this is the weirdest song to get knocked out to next thing i know it's all over and i'm remembering everything he's like look you can't drive for 24 hours you can't do any of that i was like bro i'll give you six i gave him six yeah. hours i took four naps in those six hours i went to the gym and freaking spent an app, like two hours on the elliptical <laughs> dude i was like i gotta work this off man like i'm fucking this is not yeah. i don't want to sit at home and just eat because you when you wake up from one of those naps like it's like drinking when you wake up from a drinking thing you're fucking hungry you don't know why you're hungry it's yeah like, i just kept eating Dehydrated. And you're like what the hell <laughs> oh my god it was the worst thing oh. in the world uh here i'll tell you um because like uh in november i had soldier surgery and um you know and uh i'm getting prepped to do soldier surgery and they're sitting me in the you know the, they're the waiting room they bring me in and when i get out of the uh the gurney they had me in to get into the actual surgery bed they were like, fuck, we didn't realize you were this big. <laughs> and like, cause uh, they're like, so, um, because how tall uh, I'm, I'm six, five, like say 300. And so I get into this fucking gurney and, and they're like, someone bring me a stool. <laughs> cause he couldn't reach over my shoulder. So do the shoulder surgery. So they literally had to perform my shoulder surgery on a stool and the anesthesiologist, before he knocks me out, he's like, Hey, uh, I'm going to give me a local anesthetic. And then I'm going to do this nerve block on you. And you're going to have to tell me if you feel this. And so, um, you know, he gives me the anesthetic and uh, he puts a little slit in my fucking neck to do what he's about to do for this nerve block. Uh, you know, I'm, I can't see any of this. He's just, you know, comment, you know, commentating on this. And he goes, fuck. And I'm like, that's not in my head. I'm like, that's not what I want to fucking hear. No. He's all, you got so much neck muscle. It's going to make it really hard. And I'm like, are you fucking serious right now? You know what I'm saying? He's all, and he, so I could feel him wiggling around in there. You know, it's, it's, it's numb from whatever he did. And he goes, uh, you feel this? And I'm like, I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> it's in my fucking hand. So good. That's exactly where it's supposed to be. And then this, and then, uh, whatever they did for this nerve block, they were like, it's going to hurt a lot, not just a little bit, a lot. So try not to brace yourself. And I'm like, what do you, you know, like, I understand what he's meaning, but I'm just like, oh, is it going to be, it's so, ugh, it hurt so fun. This nerve block, I'm like, it's supposed to not hurt, right? Yeah. This motherfucker was brutal. I was like, son of a bitch. I'm like, oh, he's like, don't flick your arm, don't flick your arm. Oh my God. That's, that's just, it's just fascinating to me, the human body, man. Like, you know, when you're in your, like, 17 16 you think you're indestructible like you got hit by a forklift i yeah. was hit the reason why i asked what type of forklift you were hit by was because i was hit by a jet ski and i know the exact fucking jet ski damn sea dudes man <laughs> i'll never oh, go yeah. back to one of those things but <laughs> if i got hit by one of those now back to when it was like four or five years ago when it happened i don't think i would be in the uh, okay condition because that thing hit me going 45 miles an hour it go, went up me like a ramp so i'm like oh. yo i'd be dead right now like yeah that's what i'm saying is like people need to be careful when they do when i see those oh, yeah, jackass no, stunts i have a whole new respect for that 
Yeah, no, no, definitely. Cause like, uh, I even got to watch the video after I was hit. Cause you know, we're, you know, everything's recorded where we're at. And so I'm watching the video and it like, it seems so slow motion in the video, but at the same time, I was like, I'm being hit extremely fucking hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like I said, it threw me three feet and there was a parked forklift from someone else away from me in that three feet and it threw me and I hit that and then fell. And so it was just so freaking just brutal, you know? And I'm like, oh my God. Don't you wish it was like an origin story where afterwards you got like superpowers, you could like blow up oh, things with your I mind? I wish. I wish forklift abilities. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, you've given me enough of your time, man. Do you want to promote where people can find your podcast, dude? Well, I'm the Angry Dad Podcast. You can find me on um, trying to. Th- I, was, I was about to do my whole spiel, but all of a sudden I'm going fucking blank. Um, welcome to the find- show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, it's the Angry Motherfucking Dad. You want to find my shit? IGTV, YouTube. You want to listen to it? Spreaker, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, SoundCloud, Deezer, iHeartRadio. This motherfucker's there where you can easily fucking find it. Rate, review, like, subscribe, all that bullshit. And thank you for having me on on Out the Blank. Dude, I got to get you to do like the raffle and we're like, going once, going twice, going on three. Or 30, <laughs> that's perfect. Dude. Uh, Down to a legit science. And thank you for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank Podcast.